Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. I'm going to begin with a prayer written by a man called Thomas Akempis. Now he lived a very long time ago. Thomas Akempis was born in 1380 and lived through to 1471. He's best known for his book entitled The Imitation of Christ. It is a medieval devotional focusing thoughts on thinking about Jesus. Perhaps you've read it. I did many years ago. I think it's worthwhile spending time to go through it. It's not very long. However, that's not all that Thomas Akempis left us. This morning I'd like to read one of the prayers that he left written down. And even though it comes from such a long time ago, I think you'll agree with me that it fills us with an appreciation of our ability to come to the Lord and to seek his help. So let's read this prayer. O light eternal, transcending all created suns, cause thy bright beams to shine into our hearts. Purify, warm, enlighten, and quicken our souls with all their powers, so that they may find their rest their joy in thee. The days of this present life are short and evil, full of troubles and sorrows. When wilt thou bring the reign of Satan to an end and grant us to walk at liberty without trials or temptations, seeing thy face and wearing thy likeness? Until then, Preserve us, O Thou, eternal truth. Come unto us, O heavenly love. Draw our affections away from earthly things and fix them upon Thyself. Blessed are they, O Lord, whom Thou choosest and whom Thou causest to approach unto Thee. Amen. For our first reading this morning, I have chosen a section from Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, and I'm going to read from verse 11 down to the end of verse 15. Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 11. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself un unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. For our devotional reading, I thought we should return to our friend Karl Heinrich von Bogatsky for another one of his readings. This time we're going to listen to his devotional based on Revelation 21 verse 9. It is done. When Jesus bowed the head and gave up the ghost, he said, It is finished. The arduous and important work of obedience and suffering which he had undertaken in his mediatorial capacity was brought to a conclusion. He could say to his Heavenly Father, 
I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Now when all the redeemed are gathered, he who sits on the throne beholding those he purchased with his blood and brought to glory, rejoicing in these works of his hands, may thus express himself. It is done. The means and helps appointed for training you up and preparing you for glory are now laid aside, being no longer necessary. The scaffolding is now taken down when the grand and glorious building in all its parts is completed. That which is perfect is come. That which was in part is done away. What depth of wisdom, what beautiful order in the plan of salvation and in the tendency of its various parts to perfect the work of redeeming love agreeably to the eternal counsel of peace. How harmonious are all the links of the golden chain connected. And at this point he directs our thoughts to Romans chapter 8 verses 28 to 30. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. So this is the doing of the Lord. And is it not marvellous in our eyes? When receiving the Spirit that is of God, I see the things that are freely given by God. Do I not also see and admire Emmanuel in the whole of this plan? It is done. <laughs>